Hey guys, what's up? It's Monsel with Nutripedia, and today we're gonna talk about vitamin D. So if you haven't heard of vitamin D, it's also called the sunlight vitamin. I'm here in Austin, Texas, where we get a ton of sun, but there's plenty of places in the world, especially in the United, northern United States, in Europe, where they don't get enough sun throughout the entire year. And there's a number of cognitive effects that are influenced by how much vitamin D we get on a daily basis. So most of the studies look at deficiency of vitamin D in people who don't get enough of this essential nutrient. Now a big percentage of the American population and people in Western Europe have this problem, so it's really important to look at these studies carefully. So there are two main benefits of taking vitamin D supplementation for cognitive performance. The number one issue is preventing cognitive decline. An animal study with vitamin D showed that adequate supplementation could prevent neurological decline in the hippocampus, which is the region of the brain primarily revolving around memories, learning ability, etc. So there's two particular studies that focus on vitamin D and Alzheimer's disease, one of which showed that vitamin D in adequate amounts could help prevent Alzheimer's disease, and another showed that there's an inverse relationship with serum vitamin D, the amount of uh, vitamin D that's in the blood, and the associated risk of Alzheimer's disease. So in both of these situations, it's actually showing that vitamin D deficiency is a big problem. And like I said earlier, there's a ton of people that are deficient in vitamin D, and getting any kind of supplement, eating some kind of fish, will help to improve your levels of vitamin D. So guys, the second main benefit is for anxiety and depression, and there are two specific studies, one of which show that people who are anxious or depressed are oftentimes also low in vitamin D. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that if you take a vitamin D supplement, it's going to automatically remove your anxiety and depression, but if that depression is caused by a deficiency in vitamin D, then supplementation can help. Now Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who I'm a very big fan of, has done some research and published studies in 2014 showing that vitamin D is imperative for serotonin production in the gut. Now her science looks specifically at autism and how the effects between vitamin D and autism might be correlated, but it is interesting that serotonin being produced in the gut is related to vitamin D. So the number of people who are deficient in vitamin D is very high. If you're watching this, you're probably a knowledge worker, meaning you spend most of your time indoors, maybe at a computer, doing some type of intellectual work. Even in a place like Austin, Texas, there are plenty of people who don't get enough vitamin D because they don't go outside often enough to take advantage of the sun. If you're a knowledge worker and you live in a place of northern climate, like the northeast of the United States or northern Europe, then there's a high likelihood you are deficient in vitamin D. In fact, deficiency is so heavy that Examine editor Herman Gill recommended using a vitamin D supplement over a multivitamin in most cases. That's primarily because there are so many people deficient in vitamin D and so many benefits of making sure you have adequate amounts of vitamin D. Now if you're listening to this and you think, wow, this is a great idea to just add some more vitamin D into my regimen, don't jump to that conclusion so quickly. There are side effects of using vitamin D, especially if using them in high doses. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that toxicity in the dose of 10,000 IUs or greater can cause significant problems, including death. So don't just take as much vitamin D as possible thinking that the more the better, that's not the case. Another study, uh, a meta-analysis of 75,000 women showed that elderly women who were taking vitamin D plus calcium could increase their risk for kidney stones. So 
This isn't a direct one-to-one -one correlation with vitamin D, the supplement, but it is something to consider if you have a lot of vitamin, if you have a lot of calcium and you're taking additional vitamin D in high quantities, there could be side effects that you aren't aware of. Now, quite frankly, vitamin D is not challenging to get in your everyday life. I work for an hour and go for a 10-minute walk every single hour, which means I usually spend anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half outside every day. Realistically, you only have to spend 10 to 15 minutes outside and you could be in the shade for most of it and still get the vitamin D that you need. I recommend you do a few calculations. See whether you are located in a northern climate, see how much time you spend outside on an average day and how much sunlight you get. You might find that you don't actually need a vitamin D supplement, especially during the summer and you might find that it's really useful for, for you to have during the winter months. Now a typical dosage of vitamin D is somewhere in the range of 1 to 2,000 IUs per day. Some of the upper ranges go all the way to 5,000 and some even push to 10,000. If you're living in a place where there's not a lot of sunlight, it's very dark and you don't get outside much. Just keep in mind that it's not a situation where more is better. Make sure you're dialing in on exactly what you need and supplementing where possible. So guys, that's it for today. If you guys found this useful, I hope you can go ahead and subscribe, check out some of the other videos. But more importantly, if you wanna learn more about vitamin D, if you wanna see some of these studies that I've mentioned, and you wanna know what is a reliable source of vitamin D, go ahead and click the link right here. You'll be taken to a post on Neutropedia with all the information, all the details, and I hope you find it valuable. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, I'm falling on my knees, forgive me, I'm afraid.